Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be uh, sharing Lesson 8 with you today for July the 25th, 2021. We're still in Unit 2 entitled Faith and Salvation. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Seeking Reconciliation. Our devotional reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 through 12. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. And we will be studying today from Romans chapter 5 uh, verses 1 through 11. Our key verse reads, Therefore since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. As taken from Romans chapter 5, verse 1 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to identify the relationship between faith in Christ and justification in the sight of God. Secondly, to repent of personal failures to obtain the peace that God gives. And then thirdly, to celebrate your justification through faith in Christ. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, On Trust. Uh, the second outline is entitled, On Time. And then the third outline is entitled, On Testimony. And we are always privileged and honored, thankful to God for uh, these gracious opportunities to share uh, the Word of God with you through our Sunday School lesson. We certainly encourage you always to get your Bible and be prepared to take some scripture notes um, that we're going to share with you today. We have quite a bit to get to uh, as we have been uh, studying uh, the book of Romans. Uh, we are in chapter 5 today uh, verses 1 through 11. And so uh, just a little bit about this book, the book of Romans, that I believe is important for us to understand. Um, the book of Romans, uh, the divinely uh, revealed gospel of God in, in the book of Romans is the antidote for the Babel or false gospels of our day or particularly any day. Uh, it's called the uh, profoundest and yet the simplest document the epistle is for sinful mankind as it is. It points out how lost, uh, helpless humanity can find deliverance in Christ and what this deliverance includes. So uh, this book focuses on uh, uh, Christ's cross. Uh, that's very important for us to understand. And also uh, Christ's redemption is shown to be humanity's only hope but what a glorious exhilarating hope uh, that we find in Christ Jesus our Lord and so we are thankful today uh, we're going to share what what we are talking about um, in terms of, of uh, uh, justified or be or justification if you will uh, the key verse said since we are justified through faith but justification uh, just simply means that it's a process uh, by which an individual is brought uh, into an unmerited uh, right uh, relationship uh, with God. It can, it can be through, uh, uh, obviously through people, but more importantly we are talking about a relationship that has been established. Uh, and so justification, uh, we hope that uh, as believers that we are having experience uh, experiences with God through this process of justification we are not uh, 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 just focusing on uh, theological aspects of uh, our salvation but we should really have should be engaged or should be uh, experiencing a, a Holy Ghost relationship uh, uh, because of our faith. Uh, it was never God's intent uh, that we would not uh, experience uh, the cross, that we would not experience the resurrection. And so uh, one of the things that Jesus did 
uh, after his crucifixion and, and subsequent resurrection, uh, he, uh, the Bible declares that he was seen uh, by many. He was seen by individuals, uh, disciples, and he was seen by others. In other words, what I'm sharing with you today, these individuals uh, uh, had an experience of that resurrection. And that's something that you and I should certainly uh, uh, be focused on today. And we're going to lift this in, uh, in biblical terms so we would understand uh, where we're coming from. But the biblical context for this lesson is as follows. In the first part of chapter 5, uh, Paul examined the meaning of righteousness by faith. Uh, this week's lesson deals with the effects of the righteousness by faith upon the believer. It addresses reconciliation and justification by God through our faith, uh, which we can claim and should proclaim in God. So the lesson will bring new meaning to the song and thought uh, of amazing grace and so Paul makes plain the need for salvation uh, from sin for all humanity uh, Jews and Gentiles alike and I just want to help us to understand uh, 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 where our lesson lands today in chapter 5 we should really go back to chapter 1 and, and, and get the flow uh, uh, of this epistle uh, as Paul seems to address uh, the Gentile believers as well as the Jews. These two individual groups uh, uh, historically uh, did not get along. Uh, uh, one was claiming uh, privilege, the other was claiming privilege. And so what Paul is doing is addressing both groups uh, uh, in this context of this epistle to help both groups understand that neither one can boast about anything uh, in terms of how they have been brought into this relationship uh, uh, with God. But, but more importantly and more broadly that the book of Romans, uh, at least for me, it helps me to understand the threat uh, between uh, unmerited grace or free grace if you will um, and and legalism uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that and share some scripture scriptures with you because uh, legalism is still a threat to free grace uh, what I mean by that is that uh, uh, like the Jews uh, 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 were claiming certain privileges uh, uh, certain works, if you will, of the law, uh, uh, particularly that they had done or, or uh, that, that had earned them the right uh, to be uh, who they were and they were privileged above all others. Uh, and that's still a threat today. And it, it, it doesn't mean that our works uh, are, are not credible, but our works are simply what they should be. In other words, if you are saved, uh, you are a believer in Jesus Christ, works is, is the byproduct, if you will, of that relationship. We don't get any points. We're not earning anything before God because of our record, because of our services, because of the things that we do. And that, that's clear in this epistle, and we will lift a little bit more about that. But but I should also direct you to Romans uh, chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. But let's get into uh, this first outline talking about on trust. And this is taken from Romans chapter 5 um, verses 1 through 5. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. Paul says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom uh, we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Verse 3, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Uh, perseverance, character, and character, hope. 
And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And I just want us to understand here, uh, uh, I want you to look at Galatians chapter 3. Uh, verses 10 through 14 and also Galatians chapter 3 verses 21 uh, through 25 and to be clear we have been justified through faith not works right uh, uh, we can't do anything we can't earn anything uh, not in God's sight we can we can do that amongst one another and 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 certainly encourage one another in the things that 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 we do but in the sight of God uh, we have been justified through faith and and as we uh, 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 pull this apart I want to go very quickly to uh, the book of Ephesians uh, because I think this will uh, sort of help us to unpack uh, how uh, we got to be where we are today, how it came to be uh, that we are justified uh, uh, through faith. Uh, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. All of this is good, but I want to uh, uh, focus particularly uh, on verse 13. Paul is talking here. Uh, and the Bible says at verse 13, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, uh, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the, the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So uh, uh, how we became or came to be justified, we had to hear the word of God at some point uh, in our Christian life. This is what Paul is saying here. Uh, and then we also trusted in what we heard. We relied on it. Uh, we put our confidence in the message uh, uh, that we heard and then as an extension of that, uh, uh, because it relates to our salvation, we believed it uh, after we heard it, we trusted in it, and then you begin to have experience. That's what I said earlier uh, about uh, having experiences. If you are a believer and you have trusted uh, uh, in the word of God so as to be saved, Paul says here, uh, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You should have had an experience or an encounter with the third member of the Trinity who was uh, uh, sealing you. This is the only way you can quote unquote get into the church. Uh, 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 and so what the Holy Ghost did, he sealed you and transformed you in or as a member into the body of Christ into the mystical body of Christ into the church if you will and that changed you you knew about that you experienced that and so uh, 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 this is the promise that Jesus was talking about to his disciples in Acts chapter 1 right and so after you were sealed Paul goes on to say this is the guarantee right so if if we're looking at this first outline talking about hope uh, we are hoping uh, and we are, are, are praising God we are trusting in God because we understand we have been brought into a place of reconciliation there's no more enmity or ill will between you and God you have peace you know and as I was studying this I, I was thinking about what causes a believer to rest, right? To 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 uh, 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 come to terms with his or her experiences, and so if we have been justified by faith, as Paul lays out here, and I've given you Ephesians chapter one, uh, verses thirteen and fourteen to help you understand 
uh, 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 what you have in Christ, you should have now rested from legalism or from works or from uh, uh, from trying to help God save you, if you will, or trying to earn something from God. You will never be able to do that. And so as a believer, I don't have to try to prove myself uh, uh, to anyone because I have rested from legalism because grace has brought me to a different place uh, than uh, 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 someone that's trying to say that they're trying to get themselves together uh, uh, before they give their their lives to Christ. Uh, that's a that's a never-ending struggle, right? But for the believer who has a, a, a confidence in the Word of God and who has trusted in the Word of God at face value. Uh, the fact that of how an individual is saved, uh, uh, you believed it after you heard it and you trusted in it and then you were sealed. You are having experiences and this is ongoing. The Holy Spirit is going to continue to convict you and me to help us understand the reality of what we have or the reality of our justification or the reality of being justified or the reality of being at peace with God. And so uh, now you and I, we can stand down if you will. But I want you to look at at your leisure. We won't have time just to illustrate more about this rest. Uh, uh, I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 and one of the things that happens to us in the church if I can just summarize those verses for you sometimes the gospel does not help us it doesn't mean that the preacher is bad it doesn't mean that the message is bad but it has to do with you responding to what you are hearing so it's not my fault uh, uh, per se if I didn't move you when you didn't believe what I said you could have moved yourself right uh, uh, so we, we we need to uh, 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 take the brakes off the preacher if you will uh, uh, it's not our fault if you are not trusting in or relying on what the Word of God say uh, says we're just messengers right we're only representatives of the Word of God but we are we are not the individuals to bring you to where you need to be so we need to take a look at this thing uh, 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 with sober eyes in terms of understanding uh, as Hebrews chapter 4 will help you to understand if you don't mix faith with what you hear then the word of God cannot help you I hope you understand that because that's what it means being justified by faith right confidence or reliance uh, on the word of God uh, uh, believing the word of God at face value we put our hope and our trust in the Word of God and it pays dividends in terms of experience with God to help us understand the reality uh, uh, of what uh, Christ has done uh, it's it's all coming through Jesus right we don't want to we don't want to miss that because uh, uh, there is no other name given right whereby we can be saved so it has to come through him this resurrection this experience has to come through him and so verse 2 uh, of Romans chapter 5 says we have gained access right by faith into this grace this is what I said earlier this was the door if you will into this this is access now in which we now stand this is where we are this is the reality of things right now for the believer for that born again individual this is your reality and we boast in the hope of the glory of God now this is where boasting comes in right where we can we can boast right but we can give God the glory that because that's where it belongs we are boasting in him right we're not boasting in ourselves but this is what I, I, I see here in verse 3 not only so but we also glory in our sufferings right just because you and I are saved we're born again does not mean we're not going to have to suffer right suffer what suffer uh, 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 at the hands of the evil one uh, uh, who 
uh, comes to tempt, comes to rob, comes to steal, comes to destroy. We suffer many things, right? Persecution uh, 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 takes place in, in the believer's life. And so uh, we don't have to uh, 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 become disheartened about this thing, but this certainty of our destiny in Christ gives spiritual backbone in suffering, right? For we realize that tribulation for Christ cannot be futile in the life to come or unrewarding in its beneficial effects in this life. So it doesn't nullify that your suffering, whatever we go through, and this is something that we need to uh, hang our hat on, whatever you're going through today, it does not nullify what Christ has done in your life, right? I want you to read Romans chapter 8 when you have time and just hang out over there uh, 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 with that entire chapter because God knew beforehand. Look at Jesus. He suffered, right? But he was highly exalted as a result of his suffering and subsequent death. So we don't need to become discouraged because God allows some things to happen uh, uh, in our lives but you are still saved at the end of your trial. You're still a child of God, no matter who lies on you, who, uh, who steals from you, whatever they say about you, whatever discouragement you might face, it will not change God's mind because you now have access into this, into this grace through your faith. Right? It has nothing to do with circumstances, and it cannot nullify, it cannot change uh, what has happened uh, uh, in your life. But I kept on looking at this thing, uh, and this is what suffering tends to do for us, and this is why God sometimes allows it or permits it or says no or does not deliver because uh, 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 that suffering... Uh, as Paul says, he said, this is what we know. This is what we understand about suffering, that it produces perseverance. You know, one of the things that I love about people who have trials is that they stay with the Lord no matter what, right? Uh, they're bunkered in to their faith. They're bunkered in to what the Lord is doing in their life. And so it's producing perseverance, right? Why do we need perseverance? Why do we need that? What, what type of benefit do we gain from persevering? Well, God is the, uh, is the comptroller over all of these things. And, and he understands how to develop us uh, and to make us what we should be. And so uh, uh, Jesus cried out in anguish for what he was going through in Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 5. Paul cried out. Uh, 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 in, in his anguish and all of the things that he was going through. And so God will allow some things to happen in your life to produce a desired effect, right? Uh, uh, you and I don't have the, the, the foresight to see uh, what it takes to make us uh, uh, to what, into what God would have us to be. But that perseverance uh, moves on and develops a uh, 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 Christian character or character if you will it says here and then character hope this is building the individual this is building your spiritual life this is building uh, 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 your backbone if you will this is uh, 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 the development process of you being rooted and grounded uh, you are understanding that God is developing you and making you uh, 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 into what he would have you to be. He's refining your character and, and it's producing hope. Uh, 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 and it should be because we are watching or realizing that God is moving in our lives. We can feel it, right? We can see, we can look in the mirror and see that we're being changed right before our eyes. Even when you lay down and go to, uh, go to sleep, God is at work uh, developing you so when you wake up the next day you're different your attitude is different God is at work behind the scenes uh, in your life and, and you should experience this and you should realize this and you could you should thank God uh, 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 and th this would be a stretch right for all of us to, uh, to thank God for the suffering to thank God for the trial right normally we don't do that we want the trial delivered 
because it's uncomfortable. But Paul is saying here something else is happening here, right? Something else is being produced here. And look at verse 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, And hope right, does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts right, through the Holy Spirit. Right? You should feel this, who has been given to us. What I love about this, uh, as we looked at Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 13 through uh, uh, 14, it talked about the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, being a, a, a down payment, right? We all understand what a down payment is. That seal that you have on your life is a down payment it should it should spark uh, some hope and outlook for you if God is sealing you for a day of redemption you should understand there is more in store for you more in store for me uh, but that seal that you have is just is as is, is Paul lays it out it's just a down payment until we are fully engulfed until we are in the very presence of God and we are apart from this sinful world and we'll be able to realize things in a in, in a more profound way but right now we have this down payment uh, in effect in our lives and we have suffering right and and, and sometimes we become discouraged uh, because of these things but but be encouraged today uh, uh, I would share that with you today but we want to move on to uh, this second outline talking about uh, on time, right? On time. Romans chapter 5, uh, verses 6 through 8, and again from the NIV translation. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might uh, possibly dare to die verse 8 but God demonstrates his love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us you know when I was thinking about this I went back over to Proverbs um, I believe chapter 4 and I was looking um, at what the Lord was doing right I believe that's Proverbs chapter 4 verse 12 uh, let's, let's go over there very quickly uh, because I want you to see this and we'll talk about it as it relates to uh, what what exactly was happening to us when we were in sin right while we were in sin while we were doing the things that uh, we shouldn't have been doing Christ was doing something for us while we were uh, uh, committing uh, uh, our own destructive paths uh, God was doing something for us while we were unconcerned about uh, what God was doing uh, we were concerned only about the things that uh, uh, that we wanted uh, in our lives right but we were on uh, a destructive path I want us to look at that's not chapter 4 that's actually Proverbs chapter 14 I want to go there very quickly Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way of death right while we were yet sinners, while we were doing what we wanted to do, right? There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, and yet he will be punished if he follows it. For his perverted conscience may arise from his desertion of God 
and his his refusal of the light he offered right and this leads you back over to Romans chapter 1 verse 28 right but this is the path that we were on we were powerless we were sinners right while we were engaged in all of these other activities Christ was dying for the ungodly and it's sure it's without question if God had not stepped in on time in time right with his unmerited favor and his grace in our lives we would have perished in the way right so this outline is very timely for when we were yet without strength right so we need to <laughs> we need to thank God for this privilege right we need to thank God for how he brought us out with a mighty and an outstretched arm we need to thank God that we now have a future right we have a, 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 a secure future this justification gives conviction of security it gives assurance of salvation by contrasting what we were before being justified with what we are after being justified. Does that make sense? Justification gives conviction of security. It gives assurance of salvation by contrasting what we were before being justified with what we are after being justified. One of the things I, I, I quickly realized when the Lord saved me is that he was not treating me the way I deserve to be treated. Right? He was handling me with loving arms when I deserve to be removed from this life. Right? This is how this thing, you know, when we are thinking about this thing and we are praising God, we 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 are uh, 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 we are looking back to where the Lord have brought us from, and then we are also looking forward, right, for what we expect God to continue to do in our lives, right. So this is very important for us to understand, and this is praiseworthy, right. Somebody sang a song, say he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Right? So God's love is so amazing. It'll, it, it allows his grace to reach us just when we need it the most. Right? If he have to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up. Question is asked here. We all have on time testimonies about God's grace manifested in our lives why do you think people fail to sincerely seek reconciliation with God and others that's that's a that's a question for the ages right we are literally pleading with individuals this is free grace this is an opportunity to have your uh, past uh, 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 eradicated this is a this is a this is a gracious opportunity uh, to for God not to count what you did in the past. God is not keeping score on your sin. God is trying to save you from your sin, right? God is not thinking about your past. God has prepared a future through Jesus Christ, and so and we ought to also uh, recognize the power of reconciliation with one another, you know. Uh, but I will add this caveat as far as it depends on you do what you are supposed to do uh, forgive others if, if they don't recognize the forgiveness and how this thing works if they don't appreciate Psalm 32 so be it but do your part because you and I know for sure if we had not been forgiven of our sins right 
where would we be today? So we have re uh, received Jesus Christ. He took on the punishment of our sinfulness. He took on the punishment, right? Thoroughly punished, thoroughly judged for our sins, right? So we ought to appreciate this thing in terms of uh, uh, what Christ has done for us. Our last outline is entitled On Testimony. This is taken from Romans chapter uh, 5 verses 9 through 11 and again from the NIV translation. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Verse 11, not only is, is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. You know, it's such a beautiful thing to understand and to appreciate the fact that, you know, prior to Christ uh, coming into this world, Man had a wall. Mankind, humanity, had a literal wall, right, between us and God. There was a literal dividing wall. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 14 through 18. That wall was sin. There was no way after the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3. There was no way for man to be brought back into the relationship with God that, that was enjoyed before the fall without Jesus Christ. So this wall right, of sin had been erected. It was a dividing wall where there was no peace between God and man. There was only enmity or strife or ill will because of the nature of God versus the sin sinful nature of man. Let me let me back up. Versus the holy nature of God, right? And the sinful nature of mankind. That was the wall. Right? God was not satisfied with that arrangement. So he fixed it. He fixed it through his only begotten son. And what Ephesians chapter 2 will tell you. It will tell you how that wall was broken down. Right? Because God wanted that fellowship with mankind again. He wanted that relationship repaired. He wanted the breach fixed, right? And you and I couldn't fix it because we were sinful. You and I couldn't repair the breach because of our unholy character. We couldn't fix it if we worked at it for the rest of our lives. So what God did he sent his only begotten son on an assignment to tear down the wall or to repair the breach between humanity and God so fellowship could be restored so you and I could enjoy peace with God through the repairer of the breach which is Jesus Christ. So you can have access again <laughs> into the grace that God had wanted us to have before the fall and that we enjoyed before the fall. Right? So all of this was set up by Christ. He didn't come to save himself. He came to save you and I. Right? 
So now we experience some hardships. But it will not change God's position. The, the wall has been torn down. right? The blood has been shed. Christ has died and has uh, 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 been raised on the third day. And has ascended. Right? So the process, the mission was accomplished. Who will go down and save man and redeem man from his sinfulness? Jesus raises his hand. I'll go. Send me. Nobody else could come. Right? This was not a job for an angel. This was a job for a savior. This was this was a job that 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 had to be done. Because God said, uh 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 what is man? That you are mindful of him. Psalm 8. Right. We are the crown. Of God's creation. And his love has been demonstrated. Even in John 3.16. For God so loved the world. He started giving. He started giving what was closest to him. What was near and dear to him. So you and I. Could, could be able to come back. He gave his only begotten son. I thank God for this lesson. I thank God for what has been offered. I thank God for what has been received. I thank God that you and I have lived long enough to experience the salvation. We don't just have head knowledge, but we have heart knowledge. I thank God for what Paul is saying here to help these Gentiles and these Jews understand. If there's no reason for you all to be pointing fingers back and forth at one another when you are all in the same boat. What difference did it make whether you were a Jew or a Gentile when Christ came to save all of humanity? Because all of humanity had the same sin problem. Right? This is not this is not about color. This is not about race. This is about nature that has to be transformed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I hope, trust, and pray that I've given you something to think about. This is a very powerful lesson, one that is near and dear to my heart. Keep Romans chapter five in your arsenal. Right? In your tool belt, if you will, you have something now. I, I, I you've seen people uh, uh, try to move to find peace. We'll leave the country trying to find peace. We'll go buy up property to find peace, right? We'll we'll insulate ourselves in order to find peace. But you won't find it until you come to Jesus Christ. That peace passes all understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name today for who you are. We bless your name because you are God and beside you there is none other. We bless your name today for what you have done in Jesus Christ. What you have accomplished through the blood, through the life of your only begotten Son is beyond our comprehension. Father, we thank you. We know you are the source and we are only able to to talk about the things that we know. But 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 your loving kindness is so broad. Your grace is beyond our uh, uh, finding out. But we thank you that we are the recipients of such a grace. Thank you for what you have done through Jesus Christ. Thank you for each and every one under the sound of my voice right now. Let this loving kindness be poured out into their hearts. Let them come to realize in a more uh, 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 definite manner, O oh God, of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We rebuke any negative adversary that comes against the promises of God. 
We thank you for what you have done. Thank you for using men and women to, to help us to understand. Thank you for your word today. And I just pray that you would open up our understanding to help us understand that if we're going to boast, we need to say God did it. If we're going to boast, we need to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We lift up each and every one that might be sick, that might be discouraged today because of the, the, the reverses of life. But it has not changed the promises that you have given to us. We hang our hope on that today. Because of the down payment we have of the power of the Holy Ghost, we realize the best is yet to come. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. God bless you, uh, church hearers. God bless you, believers. Just know that I love you and that we are praying. Let's keep praying for one another, right? Let's keep praying for one another. Let's keep one another covered in prayer because our struggles are the same. In terms of the enemy trying to attack all of those who have been brought. This is why he is mad. Because you have peace with God. This is why he's angry. Right? Because you have something that he cannot obtain. God bless you. God keep you. Until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. God bless.